All right, well, this is actually post video by a couple days. Um, a few days back, I hit the shorelines of Rhode Island targeting fresh migratory striped bass. And what that means is like a quick breakdown on the striper migration. Um, every, you know, every winter, the water gets cold. All the fish we have in the northern waters, they migrate south. Same with stripers, um, with the exception of holdovers, which is a, kind of a different topic. These fish migrate south for the winter. Right around mid-April, we'll start to see the body of fish migrate north. So this is what's happening right now. The stripers are starting to trickle back in. Usually in Rhode Island, anywhere between April 12th and April 15th, you'll see a big body of fish, meaning you go out on trips and you don't just catch one schoolie in four hours. You can usually catch like, you know, three, four, five, upwards of 10 fish. Like the big body is here. So that's kind of what I experienced on this trip. Uh, more or less, I got into some fish. They're all small. I wasn't expecting anything crazy. Was hoping for a slot keeper, but they were mainly schoolies. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Fresh striped bass are in Rhode Island. I mean, it's not lights out, but there's fish around. Plenty of guys are catching. Slot keepers are starting to get caught. It's still not prime time. We don't really have those slob fish yet. Uh, typically not gonna really see that until mid-May, but uh, yeah, without further ado, take you down to the shoreline. All right, I'm down here on the shoreline. It's pretty windy today, but it's at my back, so I should be able to cast fine. Uh, I'm starting off with this mad eel. Uh, this is from Fish Lab, which is an Akuma affiliate. I think this is five inch in black. And these lures I really like for the spring. One, because they're just like a small, sleek, soft plastic. And two, sometimes with small, soft plastics, they're hard to cast but not with the mad eel. It has like a nice heavy jig head on it. I mean, I got the wind helping me out too, but even with the wind in my face, you can cast these out pretty far. So I'm gonna start with this soft plastic and just hope I can get on a bite. If not, I'll, uh, I'll start changing it up a little bit. Oh, there's a fish. Dude, I didn't even realize I was hooked up. All right. Let's go, baby. Falling asleep at the wheel here. <laughs> oh, man. Here we go. Doesn't feel crazy big, but I bet you it's a striper. That's a striped bass, folks. Heads up. Nice. All right, I gotta time these waves to give this guy a release. I'm gonna wait for this big one. All right. Should be good to just give this guy a drop right there and away he goes. All right, first fish of the trip. I'll take it. I didn't even know I was hooked up for the first like five seconds. There we go, there's another one. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, fish got some air, bro. <laughs> oh man, I have missed uh, shore fishing for stripers, that's for sure. These are some feisty fish, man. Fired up. Let's go, baby. They're loving this uh, mad eel. Look at that, another one. Nice little striper. He's got some broken stripes on him. Small, but really aggressive. He got some air. All right, buddy, you see him? All right, that's two fish in like 15 minutes. That's so not bad. They're chewing in this nasty weather. It's not like I'm fishing first light either. Oh, I just got whacked. Dude, this is a good bite right now. They're fired off. That's up. Ah, that soaked me. Backing up. 
sick of getting soaked. There we go. There's another one, man. They are fired up, bro. Hell yeah. Oh, man. I love fishing for stripers in like this nasty weather. Usually just gets them fired up. They're all gonna be small fish. I'm not really expecting anything big, but I don't know. If the bite's this good, I might try some top water or something to change it up a little. That's actually a better fish. That's the biggest one so far. Whoa. All right, I gotta figure out how to land them without dying. I'm gonna bring them over here. That's not a bad bass. Gotcha. Better approaching keeper size. They're loving this mad eel, man. Number three. See ya. All right, it's been about, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes since my last fish. Oh man, <laughs> I was gonna throw this, uh, I really like this Yozuri topwater, but it is pretty jank looking. This is actually the lure that uh, <clears throat> hooked my hand in the kayak last year. But you know what? Hopefully this rust kind of washes off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. See if uh, can't get stripers to hit that way. I just want to give this like, treat it like a mini dog basically and give it a good walk the dog motion. And that side to side on top just drives the stripers crazy. Oh, swing and a miss. Fish just went for it, bro. Why'd I say bro? It sounded like a <laughs> I literally saw a striper. I, I bet you the camera picked that up. All right. That was awesome. Dude, top water is so exciting. It was pretty much right where I threw it, that fish blew up on it. Oh, that was sick. <clears throat> that was awesome, man. Oh, man. I said sick so loud, I lost my voice. That striper got absolutely airborne. So much fun, dude. So much fun. Oh, shit. Okay. Wow. Alright, that's an example of how, whoa, I'm going to back up. <clears throat> that is an example of how not to handle a fish right there. That could have been really bad. I'm going to need my pliers for this one. I'm an idiot, bro. Alright, that was, I just have bad luck with this lure, I guess, man. That striper came in. <clears throat> And I kind of brought him to my foot and he was super active and he just like shook his head and shook the hook into my corker. I mean, it's not in my foot. I think um, this lure has gotten me so much. This is the second time it's gotten I me and it didn't hook me, it just hooked my boot. I think what I'm gonna do, especially since I'm targeting stripers too, is I'm gonna start taking the back treble hooks off and just have the front hook so it's just less hooks going in the stripers face. <laughs> I think that's my plan. 